My name's Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV 7. Thank you very much for being with us. You're watching a program called Discover Queen Anne's. And what we do every week, we have different people come on the show and share with you what they're doing in Queen Anne's, perhaps the history of Queen Anne's County, perhaps the history of the shore, or activities they're involved in. We're delighted today to have Amy Cowley, who's a food solicitor for the Maryland Food Bank. And Amy, thank you very much for coming with us. Thanks for having me. On a very me. cold, freezing cold, March windy day. day. Yes. Amy, before we start talking about the food bank and what you do, uh, we've had a delightful uh, conversation before we went on the air. Tell me where you grew up. Uh, I hear you're a great softball player. You got a granddad <laughs> who was uh, had a very interesting position. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. I grew up in Caroline County in Denton. I graduated high school in 95. I played softball and basketball. My and in, in high school, you were an outfielder? I was first base. Oh, in high school you were first base Left too. field. Okay, I right. mean, left-handed, okay. so I played first base. And yep. Amy and I have, Margie a, Knight. <laughs> have a couple things in common. We, Her coach, Margie Knight, who's a legend now at Salisbury. Yes, sir. And Amy swings from the left-hand side of the plate, but yes, writes sir. with her right hand. Correct. And unfortunately, Dad said no swinging from the left-hand side for golf. No, he wants me <laughs> to swing right-handed so I don't mess up my softball swing. <laughs> okay. And believe me, my golf swing and softball swing are totally messed up, so your dad's totally So he right. was right. <laughs> Amy, tell me about uh, high school, played softball, mm -hmm. went to college, where now? I went to college in Gaffney, South Carolina okay. on a basketball softball scholarship for four years. Graduated okay. uh, in 1999 uh, with a degree in, uh, bachelor, got a Bachelor of Science in K-12 through Physical Education. So I was certified to teach okay. physical education in South Carolina. And you wanted, and you wanted teaching was your goal? Yes. Yeah, and you yep. went on to teach, you told me, in private school. Yeah, I got my master's after college, and then I went on to teach a private uh, all-girls high school okay. in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, for seven years and wanted to do something a little bit different. So I went on to teach at Gardner-Webb University for two years, taught health and nutrition there. Okay. Then I couldn't find a job, so I worked a bunch of part-time jobs, and <laughs> mom and dad said, move back home. So Come back to Caroline County. Come on back to Denton, so here I am. Now let me, before again, before we start talking about the food bank, Tell me about granddad and dad. I know granddad, uh, I'll be quiet. You tell me about granddad. Well, Pop Pop was Secretary of Agriculture for the state of for Maryland. For the state of Maryland. Yes, sir, from 1979 to 1991, so about 12 to 13 years. Uh, he helped lead our state in agriculture, traveled the world. Okay. I remember he went to Bangkok, he went to Japan, China. He was all over the world, Egypt. Now, were you close with granddad? I was. I okay. wish I was closer to know okay. what he did. But, but you probably have a lot of, he probably told you a lot of great stories. Yeah, he, he was a great man. Okay, good. So, uh, now, and then my dad, okay. my dad was a grain farmer, like I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, but he had to get out of it when I was in about eighth grade because prices were so low and he couldn't afford to feed all of us, so he had to rely on his uh, accounting degree. And uh, now he is working for the Department of Agriculture, okay. which is now named after Pop Pop. So all right, not bad to go to a place where it's the family name. Where it all started, okay. yeah, it's pretty cool. So he started out as a teacher, private school, went to the college level, wanted to change. So how did we get involved with the Maryland Food Bank? It and all I guess I should have, and then tell us what a food solicitor is too, okay? Uh, I got the job with the Maryland Food Bank actually because of Lead Maryland. Which now is, tell us what LEAD Maryland is. LEAD Maryland is a program through the University of Maryland mm -hmm. which uh, takes uh, individuals from the agricultural community, rural community. Uh, we have to apply, uh, then they choose individuals to interview, so we go through an interview process. Mm -hmm. And then I got in, so it's a two-year program which takes these individuals that get selected. Uh, we travel the state of Maryland learning about various aspects of agriculture. Uh, we get to go to Washington, D.C. for four days. We get to go to Annapolis for four days, learn how the government works and how to relate to our politicians. Mm -hmm. and, okay. and this is run by the state? By University of Maryland. Okay. Yes. Um, yep. Now you're taking classes while you're doing There's this? seminars okay. about every other month. We just came back from a seminar two weeks ago that was up in Port Deposit, Maryland, where we learned about the equine industry and learned about leadership. So you're learning about ag in, in the state of Maryland? And how to be a leader okay, and within the, the community. Okay, and the idea is when you finish this, you will, what, go back to the community and use all these experiences? Use these skills to better Perfect. promote agriculture in Maryland. Okay. Now, how about, that's, Amy, let's go back. First of all, if somebody doesn't know out there, what is the Maryland Food Bank? We are a nonprofit organization. We were founded in 1979. We fall under the Feeding America umbrella. Uh, 
nonprofit, like I said, we're working to try to end hunger across our state to put food uh, on the table for those that can't afford to feed themselves. Now, the Food Bank America, we, nonprofit, it's not run, run by are. the state? No, no, no we are totally non separate. We're a nonprofit. It's an NGO. It's a non nonprofit. Okay, nonprofit. Nonprofit. Okay. So, my position, for example, has been funded by a grant for the two years that I've been there. Okay. So, we solicit a lot of money from whoever wants to give it to us. You, you were, Corporations, and we'll, and we'll individuals. Give them the, okay, we'll give them the. So, tell me, the food solicitor, I'm going to take the two words you're out trying to get money and food for I, the food my bank? My primary, primary objective is to get food from produce farmers that's going to waste. Okay. So I'm soliciting food from farmers, not their profit, but looking for food that's going to waste out. Throw in, away or bury or burn. Yeah, or, something. or it, it's out in the field. It's okay. it's uh, they. Sweet corn is a big example I use because in the summertime the heat just causes them all to okay. all the fields to come on at once, and farmers can't harvest can't all. They've got to you know they can't get okay. it off, so they move on to the next field. So they'll call me and say, Hey, Amy, we've got this block of sweet corn. Uh, that needs picking and so we have a close relationship with the Department of Corrections. They go into the fields, five to eight guys, okay. pick the sweet corn. Actually the farmer, pick the corn? Yep. Yep. So, uh, and this I is donated? Yes, sir. Okay, this is and donated. And the farmer can write it off on their taxes if they wish. Mm. It's a big benefit. So we're looking for food that's going to waste, whether it's left out in the field or it's been harvested. and it's already in a silo or a barn or something? Or well, what? it's been packaged, just put okay. in boxes or bins to, to be sold, but okay. the buyer may back out. Um, a big example, a large example, uh, a produce farmer, you know, many produce farmers wholesale to grocery stores. Right. So some grocery stores will reject the product because it's not perfect. Okay. And so, for example, we so got... So the farmer's stuck with it. The you farmer's get, stuck with a tractor trailer load. Okay. This happened two times last summer. Right. Tractor trailer load of cantaloupes, which is 60 bins. Hmm. A tractor trailer load That's a lot of, cantaloupes. of watermelons <laughs> okay. right. um, that was rejected. And so they right. call me and say, hey, Amy, can you take this? And we work... Uh, we work out logistics to get it to the food bank. Now, in that case, we'll split it between, we have three branches between Baltimore, Salisbury, and Hagerstown. Okay. So we disperse it across the state. Now, what will happen? You actually, if I'm a farmer and I say, look at Amy, I'm, I'm stuck with all this stuff, you actually physically get it? I mean, you send trucks? or you, We send a you... truck to go and pick okay. up the produce. If it's out in the field, it works a number of ways. If it's out in the field, we take pallets, bins, boxes, whatever we need to glean it. Okay. If it's already been harvested, sometimes the farmer wants their pallets replaced, they want their bins replaced, so we'll take those materials to replace what they're giving us because okay. supplies are expensive. Now, you hit, you hit two interesting topics. Uh, we actually are using uh, people incarcerated in some circles. Tell me more about that because, I mean, that, that's a good service. The, the people were incarcerated in service. Yes. And uh, the more I hear that these poor people that are incarcerated, they need something to do. So tell me more about that. Uh, these guys are pre-release inmates. Okay, like the Eastern Pre-Release Center right up here in Churchill. Yes, sir. County. I've okay. used Eastern Pre-Release a number of times. I okay. used Poplar Hill Pre-Release down mm -hmm. in Salisbury a number of times. Okay. Uh, those guys are about to be released within six to nine months, I say. Okay. They're in for things like drugs, minor minor offenses. Okay. These are people that we, we low like risk. clean the roads. We, exactly. Low risk. Exactly, yeah. The, you'll the, see them, yeah. You'll yeah. see them on the sides of the roads right. picking up right. the trash. Those right. guys. They're the okay. same guys that we use at the food bank. Okay. And uh, so they go out there and pick the produce. And, and for one guy last summer, he didn't know how food was grown. He had no <laughs> idea that sweet corn was on a stalk and a you had guy, to pull it. From, yeah, yeah, cucumbers, he didn't know. He said he never wanted to see sweet corn or cucumbers again in his life. <laughs> After working so it's educational. Hours in the field. Yeah, well, they work about four hours. They arrive okay. at the, the farm at 8 a.m. They leave about 12 30 to 1 o'clock, depending, because they have mm -hmm. to be back and checked back in by 2. And the, Officer has to be off the clock okay, by two, okay. so the shift the shift goes off. Right, right. they're there four to five hours, okay. gleaning anything from sweet corn that comes on at once, watermelons that are left behind, hmm. um, cucumbers that the harvester uh, so it's separates pretty hard out. Manual labor, right? In that hot sun. Right? It is, yes. But it's a good service. But the, the guys enjoy it. You asked about the inmates; they sure. enjoy giving back to the community and doing something good with their time okay. while they're in. So. They feel really good about it. I always say it's a win-win for everyone. Oh, it is. I mean, the, the people at the other end of the food bank are getting the food. You're helping right. the farmer out, and you're also getting these incarcerated people out of some work experience. Some work and I've experience. written some of them letters of recommendation for okay. wherever. Good. So now, Amy, let me. I uh, I work through uh, my church, Mother of Sorrows, here in Centerville, and I believe we're the center distribution point for Queen Anne's County, or one one of the distribution points. 
very often we are given by the Maryland Food Bank fresh produce. So I, and I believe a certain percentage, maybe I'm wrong, you help me. <laughs> Do we have a certain percentage we're supposed to give out that's locally grown, or is that not true? I could, I, I could be totally off base. I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know that part of it. My part of it is just to get the food to okay. the food bank. And then, and then we distribute it. We okay. have individuals that work with the agencies okay. and then the volunteers at the agencies I know that, that distribute. This coming Wednesday, your, the food bank is giving us, I believe, 4,000 pounds of, what, do I, what am I going to get this time of year, potato? Uh, you could get potatoes. Okay. We're actually getting some sweet potatoes that are left over today okay. from a farmer in uh, Salisbury. See, and it's a great benefit because usually we give out canned goods and box goods, and all of a sudden when the people come, you can say, hey, how about some fresh this, fresh Which that? Which is expensive in the grocery store. Oh, produce is not cheap. So no. the ability that we have to supply fresh, nutritious produce to these individuals that couldn't afford it right. um, is, is fantastic. Now, Amy, where do, is there a office for the Maryland Food Bank? Or you said Salisbury, Hager. I mean, so there are regional offices. Yeah, we have three across the state. Okay, and they're manned by people like you, or is there, is there a full-time staff? We have full-time staff. We have probably about 80 employees in Baltimore, maybe 20 or so in Salisbury, okay. and maybe a dozen in Hagerstown. Hagerstown's our newest okay. branch. Okay, now if I, went to, I mean, if I went to the Salisbury office, what do I find? I mean, is it a warehouse? Is it, you know, please, you, know, you, would, you would find offices. One side okay. is offices, a hallway of offices where the staff works. And then on the left side, we have our warehouse space. We have docks where the trucks can back up and drop and this off is the where donations. food stuff is actually kept. Yes, okay. so we have a warehouse. I think it's 13,000 square feet, mm -hmm. of which some of it is freezer space, some of it's refrigerated space, okay. and then some of it's just regular floor space. Right. So depending on the product, we have the ability to freeze it, refrigerate it, or just keep it out. Now, what type? Okay, we've talked about sweet potatoes. Yes, sweet corn. Mm -hmm. What if I went to the Salisbury warehouse or Baltimore or Hagerstown? What would I, I mean, what, can it be, any, is it meat products too? Or just all, you know? Purdue is a big supplier to okay. us. We get, we get chicken. Uh, Pepsi gives us sodas. We have breads from all Walmart. Donated. All, all donated. All donated, yes. Okay. Um, uh, if sweets. you can get it, you can store it. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Can, right. be, can green beans, collard greens, uh, whatever. We, you never know what we're going to have because okay. you never know what's left. Okay, and basically it's because the food solicitors like yourself, mm -hmm. are, are you literally knocking on Acme? How do you, tell me how we solicit food. Well, there's a guy above me. His name is George Langenfelder. Okay. He goes by Butch. And Butch he, Langenfelder. Butch Langenfelder, he is the uh, food soliciting manager for okay. the Maryland Food now, Bank. How many of them are there? Are you, you're out of? There's two of us. You're Salisbury? Butch and myself oh, are Salisbury. the food solicitors. Okay. Butch works out of Baltimore. Oh, Baltimore. Okay. But he, he goes across the whole state. Okay. He's a busy man. That's and he's an al job. he already has relationships built with Target, Sam's, okay. Walmart's, Acme's, Food Lions, whoever So they'll it is. call him when they have stuff or the other way around? Well, he's worked with those different grocery store chains or Walmart's, what, whoever they are, okay. to establish uh, pick up points. Right. So they may we may go to Acme twice a week. Like we may come to the Acme the local in Centerville. Acme. Okay, right. Local we may Acme. come Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. There's pick up times that George, that Butch has established. Okay. So there's like a regular So in that case yeah. there's not really a phone call to okay. make that I understand like it there is with the farmers. He just knows every Tuesday go to Acme and Centerville. Every right. Thursday go to Safeway. Say, okay. Right. And that's Baltimore's got a schedule. Salisbury has a okay. schedule. I'm sure Hagerstown mm -hmm. has a schedule of, of pickups that they go and make. And do you know what you're picking up or is it just kind of, oh no, you never know. We never that's know. Half the we fun, never, right. We never know. It's kind of like Christmas every pickup, okay. I guess, because you never know what you're going to get. And let me ask you, we'll have a little fun. What's the most bizarre, I mean, is there something that you just giggle about when you say, hey, we once picked up 20, I mean, the, we give out the food pantry cereal, baby items, dishwasher. I'm sometimes, and I, we actually have people come up and say, I'm a vegetarian. I have, to, I, or I don't want, I mean, have you ever, is there I something? I had a phone call that oh, pops out in my head okay. uh, from a farmer uh -huh. who asked me, Amy, can you take diapers? <laughs> From a farmer. Yeah, I'm he's soliciting diapers. produce and he's calling me about <laughs> diapers. So I thought, okay. well, I'm not sure about that. That's not exactly produce, okay. but I'll call and find out. Well, come to find out, we would have gladly picked up diapers. Okay. Sure, because <laughs> I know uh, most of the people come to the food bank, in my experience, have had children. Right. And diapers might Diapers be are expensive, okay. so okay. yeah, apparently okay. we take diapers. So a farmer, did he say how? I don't know how it all evolved. We don't want to know, maybe. I, okay. I don't know how it evolved. On the shore, is it pretty safe to say the mainstays are corn? You help me. What, what, Sweet what corn a, is a big uh, okay. commodity that we get out of the fields. Watermelons okay. uh, and cucumbers, the pickling okay. cucumbers. I say those are the three biggest things we all get. Right. Okay. Well, then we also get squash, potatoes, 
Uh, I would love to get tomatoes. If there's any tomato farmers out there, we'd love some tomatoes. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second, how to get <laughs> Peppers, in touch okay. green peppers. Uh, not too many of those come through. Uh, that's all that's coming to mind right now. How about, Amy, like we have, uh, I know at our food bank center, we have venison. Yes. I, uh, do you get, I mean, this always interests me. Is there some guy who just said, hey, I just shot a couple deer, do you want? I'm, glad, did, you, I'm glad you brought oh, that good, up please, because that's yeah. a question that I get oftentimes when I do okay. my presentations is if right. we'll take venison, yes, yes. and the answer is yes. Okay. Uh, we work with the Farmers and Hunters Feeding the Hungry, who the Maryland Farm Bureau supports. actually an organization. Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, it's funny how that all started. A lady was driving down the road and saw a dead deer on the side and was putting it in the trunk of her car, and some man saw her and offered yeah. to help her. And okay. so this organization evolved from seeing get that. Someone a roadkill, and they decided let's distribute or get, okay. So they made an organization. The Farm Bureau supplies. And what's it called again? Is farmers it? and Hunters Feeding the Hungry. Okay. And so the Farm Bureau, if I understand correctly, the Farm Bureau gives that, that organization money, which then distributes the money to various butchers across the state. Okay. And then that gives them the money to process the deer. Yeah, because at our food bank, we actually, it's in a package about this. It looks like what you buy sausage at Correct. the grocery store. It's, it's actually a camouflage package, which oh, I get nice. a kick out of. Yeah. So go uh, so more about this. So we'll take that as long as it's, it's got to be labeled. Okay. So we got to know what if it's so you ground. Get the fin they're, not, they're not driving into Salisbury with a uh, deer. They're not drinking, no. no, they're not bringing their deer <laughs> fresh out the field. We, we okay. don't have the ability to... To do that. Okay, so if it's sla it's been slaughtered, it's been, it's been clean, slaughtered, and it's, it's been, been clean, processed. it's packaged. It's got to okay. be packaged and labeled, and we'll take it. Okay. Right. And we've got a few thousand pounds, I would say, of venison off the eastern shore through that organization. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, how about other meat products? Or, again, as they're, they're given to you by organizations. Right. Obviously, as far as I know, chicken is our biggest one because of Purdue. Okay. Yep. What now? Let's see. That's a good time in the show. If an individual or a group is going watching the show and say, hey, wait a minute, I've got access to, what's the process? Do I... if, if there's an individual out there that uh, feels like they have, he or she has donated food to donate to mm -hmm. us, they just pick up the phone and call me. I have a cell phone. And you want to share that? Sure. Or, yeah, okay. The phone number is 443-735-0757. One more time. <laughs> 443. It's flashing across the bottom of the screen. 735. Okay. 0757. And they would just ask for Amy. And yeah. I would pick up the phone because that's my cell phone number. Okay. How, I mean, it, it's going to sound silly. A can, or is there a minimum, maximum type thing? Or? I'm glad you asked that okay. too. Okay. As far as the produce is concerned, I try not to put a minimum on it okay. uh, because we have trucks up and down the eastern shore all the time. So if I don't want to say no. no okay. The food bank doesn't want to say no. So I try not to put a minimum or maximum on it. I mean, if we can handle a truckload of 60 bins of cantaloupes, we can pretty much handle anything. A case of corn, yeah. Or if it's there was an individual last summer who had a garden that overproduced. Okay. And on two occasions, she gave us about 100 pounds of variety of produce. Mm, just and right out of a home garden? Just out of her home garden. Oh, so in, any individual can help. It okay, doesn't so have to be a big farmer. When people, you mentioned tomatoes earlier, if I do like a lot of us do, I only need to put two tomato plants in, but I want to be Fred the farmer. I put in <laughs> 10. If I called you and said, I've got I would try Three to boxes. find a way. I would okay. try to find a way to either get to you or be able to find a, make arrangements to get you to where trucks okay, come. So like I said, there are trucks come in a Centerville up and down couple. The highway. Yes, okay. Centerville, Chestertown. Where, so, in, so what you're saying is individuals can call, and mm -hmm. you try not to say no. Yes, How sir. about if I'm a, a small business and I say, well, you know what, I've got three cases of Hershey bars I can't, I, I'm not selling. Again, we would, yeah. you encourage them to call? Yes. Okay. Are there ta uh, donation tax write-offs? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. They can, individuals can write their donations off on their taxes. We'll, we do everything at the food bank by weight. Okay. Once it once it goes on the truck and goes down to Salisbury, Baltimore, Hagerstown, it goes on a scale and gets weighed. Right. And so our branch manager in Salisbury will mail out the individual business, whoever, a uh, tax donation okay. for, with the so weight on it. Thank you for giving 10 pounds of something. Well, it'll have the weight on it, and then the whoever donates that product assigns the value of that product, okay. and they write it off. All right. Amy, uh, now correct me if I'm wrong. My wife, I'm a retired teacher, my wife's still teaching. It seems like to me at Queen Anne's County High School, once or twice a year, they have food drives. Mm -hmm. And again, I think uh, Maryland Food Bank is where it goes. D is that, am I right? Or? We have a program called Kids Helping Kids, right. where schools up and down the Eastern Shore uh, collect barrels of food. And I believe that's around Thanksgiving, okay. the holidays. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll collect these barrels of food for a, 
uh, specified period of time, and then a truck will come at the cl conclusion of it and pick up that product and take it to okay, the so food bank. Okay, so if you collect it, you, you'll pick it up? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, if again, if the school's out there, a principal's watching this, or a, a, a PTA and saying, hey, wait a minute. That'd be great around Thanksgiving. Again, call that cell phone number. Yes. You want to share that one more time? 443. <laughs> We're going to beat them to death on this. 735 0757. Okay. And just say, Amy, are we, we're thinking about running next Thanksgiving a food drive. Would you be, and you say, hey, we can probably get a truck there. And I would, uh, I would put, put that principal or teacher or whoever in touch with the correct person at the Maryland Food Bank okay. who would work out those logistics. Okay. How about, Amy, if someone's sitting at home and saying, you know what? I, I don't grow tomatoes like a fool like Fred does and it gives them away to all the neighbors. By the way, my neighbors dreaded seeing me in the summertime. <laughs> and I, I don't own a store, but I'd like to make a cash donation. Uh, is that also work? Oh, uh, we will take, we will welcome cash donations with open arms because okay. we are a nonprofit and we can't function and do what we do without support financially. Okay, and again, the same routine, either you or the Maryland Food Bank and Correct. say, I'd like to make a cash donation. Yes. Obviously, you accept food and you love fresh produce, mm -hmm. uh, the idea of cash. How about volunteer? Do you need volunteers? Oh my not? gosh, we always need okay. volunteers, uh, whether it's at the Maryland Food Bank, Baltimore, or Salisbury, Hagerstown. So one of the three main sites. Sorting product. Okay. Uh, or I would love to build a volunteer network at the food on the Eastern Shore okay. to, to be able to go out into farmers' fields to harvest the produce because not all farmers are comfortable with pre-release inmates okay. coming into their now, fields. Now, you're saying local people, hey, I know Fred, he and 10 people from the church are going to come out and pick Yeah, watermelon. and then okay. if, if I establish that list, then if there's a farm, say, in Churchill, that needs gleaning or Chestertown. There's a farm in Chestertown that could probably, we could use volunteers on sometimes. When that farmer calls and says, hey, Amy, you know, I've got sweet corn here, then okay. I could go to that list. Hey, Fred, we've. Get 10 people out there. You know, okay. can you get anybody for this day okay. to pick sweet corn? Right, I okay. would love volunteers. So, you're encouraging people to call and say, hey, I want to volunteer either at the, one of the warehouses or even make it easier for you. You don't have to go to Salisbury. How about No, you don't have to go to Salisbury. Okay. You could you can volunteer at Salisbury if you want, but there's okay. local agencies you could probably volunteer at your church, food pantry, soup kitchen, whatever's, okay. you know, in Centerville or wherever you live. Uh, or we take them out in the fields. Okay. Last question on the volunteer. Say if someone says, look, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm with some of those pre-release people. I don't want to be picking corn when it's 90. Do you need people in the in the warehouse uh, help sorting or not? Yes. Oh, so they could, they could go to Salisbury. All types of different roles they could do. Yeah, from sorting produce at Salisbury okay. to boxing it up to help picking it to yeah. distributing at local agencies. You name it, there's somehow they could get them. If they want to help, we, we'll find a way to put their heart to use. Okay. <laughs> Maryland, from, let's go, uh, uh, Amy, give me a sense, and I think you did the beginning, uh, the size of the project. Do we know how many people we're serving? Or is there, uh, oh, gosh, my branch manager could answer that question. Okay. I believe well, there's... Give me, a, I want to hold you, a ballpark. I believe, there's, I believe there's 460,000 individuals across our state who are called food insecure, which means they Four, do... Okay. 460,000, which means they do not know where their next meal is coming from. Okay. So that's quite a large we think population. We the Maryland Food Bank through the local distribution centers is probably helping them. That yes, manage. yes. That's and terrific. on the Eastern Shore, I don't think I've mentioned this, there's no, no. 145 agencies that we partner with to distribute so just food. just on the shore, 145, you're partners with 145 Yes. Agencies. Statewide, there's approximately 600 mm, okay. agencies that we partner with that's to help serve groups, these 460,000 people. Okay. Right. So some of which are children, which is pretty sad. Children and elderly. So... Uh, it's good that we're helping, especially in these hard economic times when exactly. jobs are hard. Jobs are hard to find. And I mean, Amy, I'm I proof gotta, of that. Yeah, well, and Amy, the tough thing is, uh, I just heard a great thing on National Public Radio. We all know how to eat better now, your fresh fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. but they're expensive in the grocery store. Correct. I mean, that, that's why these sugar in box products attract people. They're cheaper. They're cheaper, but and they're not They're not healthy. No, it's what's all. killing us. Right, okay. It's what's killing us. Amy, look, you brought a whole bunch of neat things. How about there's this wonderful book called Farm to Food 2012, which we'll share with the audience. Tell me, you did this apparently. It's a scrapbook that I- Tell I, me a little I, bit about it. It's a scrapbook that I put together. My sister-in-law works with Creative Memory, so she helped me put this together. And uh, it's just a snapshot, a visual snapshot of how the program looks in the summertime. And this basically talks about picking it up, the farmer growing it. Yes. Us 
picking it or just, and then distrib distribution? It'll, it'll show the various farmers across the eastern shore, and there's a couple in there on the western shore that sh it showcases how the program works for okay. people who are more visual, like myself. Now, I guess, and a good question, do you, say if I'm an organization, I'm, uh, oh, the mother of sorrows, Knights of Columbus, and I'm watching this program say, hey, gee, uh, yeah, we want to do that. Do you send speakers, or is there a protocol for, hey, is, could someone come give a 10-minute talk to the local Lions Club, or how, do you do that outreach that thing? I do outreach as far as the uh, Farm to Food Bank program. I've given numerous presentations up and down the eastern shore, okay. some across the other side of the, on the western shore. Uh, now, if there's an agency out there, or Mother Sorrows, or whoever would like to partner with the food bank, then they would need to get in touch with um, the main office. With the main office, okay. All right. yes. Okay. Amy, how about we get our crystal ball out here? Uh, where is this going? I mean, we, because of the economic hard times and because of, I mean, I'm sorry, food is kind of like gasoline. It's not getting any cheaper. No, it's not. Do we, are there people like yourself with graduate degrees sitting around offices and saying, hey, folks, we got to let this thing, I mean, where do we see ourselves one, five, and ten years from now, or is that a fair question? Uh, as far as the Farm to Food Bank program goes, I, I hope to see us continue to, to get bigger and expand our network. We, in my first year, we had 27 farmers statewide participate. 26, the whole state, just 27. 27 statewide. Okay. In my first year, mm -hmm. 2011 and 2012. Last year, we expanded from 27 to now 51 statewide. So we're, doubling, we're doubling. So I'm hoping to, as far as this program is concerned, which is my main area of focus, to continue to see it expand. We've okay. got 800,000 pounds of produce off the eastern shore since June 1st of that 2012. That was 800,000. 800,000 yeah. pounds. Okay. Since I started in June of 2011, the eastern shore Eastern Shore farmers have donated over one million pounds of produce to the Maryland Food Bank, mm. Eastern Shore. That's just, 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 Eastern, the, shore. just the Eastern Shore. Bay Bridge East. Bay Bridge over is okay. over a million pounds because they have mm. two big farms over there that contribute. First Fruit Farms and uh, Farms for Hunger, Serenity Farms. They grow just to donate. Okay. So they're over a million pounds in themselves as an entity. But yeah, the, uh, so as a food bank as a whole, you know, with the economy as it is, there's always going to be people hungry, and so we just hope to continue to stay around. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it's going to keep growing. Right? The, you know, if there's no jobs, people are going to struggle. So we're there to help those people, and hopefully 20 years we'll still be there to help people. I mean, we're one of the oldest food banks, if not the oldest food banks in the nation. Okay. Since Good for Mary, 1979, right? yes, okay. sir. That's when we were founded. Amy, now look, we just got a couple minutes left. Let me wrap up here. If I'm at home watching this, okay, and they're going, wow, that's pretty interesting. Uh, good for the Eastern Shore and good for the farmers and the schools and all, everybody, but I want to get involved. Uh, one, to get in touch with you again and for questions or I want to volunteer. Again, how do they contact Amy Colley at? Uh, my email is A C A W L E Y at mdfoodbank.org. Okay. So they can email me or call my cell phone. Let's do that again. 443-735-0757. Okay. And if I don't know the answer to the question, I'll direct you to the person who does. Terrific. Now, Amy, we're almost done. That wasn't as tough as facing a good lefty softball pitcher, was it? No, not, not too bad. It wasn't okay. coming at me 90 miles at 60 miles an <laughs> okay. hour or so. And we didn't throw the questions that fast. No, you. no okay. rise balls. Well, Amy, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Fred. Uh, my name's Fred McNeil. You're watching Discover Queen Anne's, and thank you for your time and we're going to see you next time.